this is the ASMR Gamer and welcome back to this evening's video and as you can tell by the title, the description, I'm just wondering if my camera is set too high because I'm leaning just because of where the microphone is, let's presume it's okay. seconds into the video. As you can tell by the title of the video, we are returning to another whispered, whispered history. Um, this is a new sort of series where we take a, you know, a very relaxed, very chill look at a bit of the history of some of video games' most popular franchises, of which there are many. The first episode at the history of Super Mario and you guys really were um, supportive of which was you know, great and definitely sort of um, made uh, me a lot more infused to um, do another one so we return once more to Whispered History I'm just got my notepad
basically sort of set out and it sort of set the precedent and the same idea is from all of them. You pick a starter Pokemon and through that you go out into the world searching and um, battling gym leaders through um, the main idea is collecting different Pokemon, uh, developing them, you know, evolving them and this whole idea of these RPG elements of growing and battling and battling and what really got the excitement going for it was the collecting aspect because the first game had 151 Pokemon to collect hence um, the, uh, the, um, the catchphrase gotta catch them all Pokemon okay um, oh wow are we yeah so that was a sort of like the main game the first game then in 2000 the second generation came out because a lot of these the main installments are considered generations because it's when like new pokemon are added so the second generation was pokemon gold and silver and that launched in 2000 i believe on the game boy color because it introduced a sort of like day night cycle um basically to show off the game's graphics um it, it added a hundred new Pokemon. Um, a director's cut was also released called Pokemon Silver, um, which basically had added a few extra features, but mainly added a female playable character, making it wildly more accessible. And at this point, it was bringing in a huge revenue for Nintendo, and it was really, um, I think, by the second generation, it had established itself as a major, major franchise. And it wasn't until 2003, yeah, three years later, when Ruby and Sapphire came out, the third generation. This actually increased the amount of Pokemon, yeah, quite significantly. It rose from 251 to 386. I'm flying through these because I'm trying to get to the ones where I've actually played and I can actually talk about a bit more in depth. So at this point, the, um, they're all handheld based, um, the main installments of the game, because I suppose the idea of exploring and collecting Pokemon is the idea of being free to move, and so on a handheld device rather than a stagnant console. Although there have been console releases, sort of like Pokemon Coliseum, Pokemon Snap, where you, um, it's an N64 game where you explore this island, and you take pictures of various Pokemon. A bit quirky, but hey, that's Nintendo. Um, yeah, so, and then it was another four years until 2007 when Diamond, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl came out. Now, this was my first Pokemon game on the Nintendo DS, and I wrote down, yeah, so, um, my first Pokemon was Chimchar which was a fire monkey. Um, there was also this cute little green, um, oh, I can't remember what the grass type was. And what was a water type for diamond? I can't remember, I had diamond and my sister, yeah, my sister had pearl. And uh, the reason why they come out with different versions is because each have different exclusive Pokemon to that type. So the idea is that you share, you link, especially on the Game Boy, the link cable, but the DS, um, you connected, you'd trade and battle, and that's how you um, got access to fill your Pokedex, which is your catalog of Pokemon. So I really did enjoy um, Pokemon um, Diamond. I particularly enjoyed riding the bike. The bike was a highlight. Well, I remember Chimchar, I got a Pikachu. I remember having a Pidgey. Pidgey was cool, because I remember just going out where um, is it Kanto? Because I believe the main area is called Kanto. Um, although, I think there are different regions. There are different regions in the game. I think the main one's Kanto. I'm coming across as such a noob here. Apologies, because I know a lot of you will be really glued up on your Pokemon. Uh, wait till Zelda. Zelda, I'll be able to. I'm a bit more familiar with. Um, but yeah, I basically got bitchy as soon as I went out. And it was, what I loved about the game is so accessible and it was very easy to pick up. Um, my 
favorite my favorite bit was um, fighting the gym leaders because it's when I I fought I had a pretty decent team pretty decent roster and then you go into the gyms and then I remember getting absolutely destroyed by a psych a psyche um, Pokemon um, I can't remember what his name is and I know um, everyone's gonna be like oh how did you know this the one with the spoons the one with the spoons is yellow not Pikachu clearly come on guys um, the one with the spoons let me know down below in the comment box and I know I just know someone's going to go hold on you call yourself the only smart gamer and you don't know well yes that's true I don't, I don't know everything though sadly about video games but yeah uh, 2007 Diamond and Pearl was a great addition and obviously it's the first time it utilizes the two screens sister had this one. I looked at it briefly. Um, I remember there being a huge statue of the legendary Pokemon in the main city. I can't really remember. Um, but yeah, that just basically built upon the um, Diamond and Pearl. Um, and a sequel actually came out, Black and White 2. And I think that just added more sort of mini games and side quests. Now, fast forward to 2013. Pokemon X and Y, I played that one, yes, thank goodness. So yeah, in 2013, um, Nintendo released Pokemon X and Y. Um, it was probably one of the more eye-catching Pokemon cases because it had the two legendary Pokemons, uh, Xerneas um, and Yveta, Yveta, X, X and Y, and they both have sort of like the both of their sort of physical uh, characteristics resembled the shapes X and Y. And that game looked stunning on uh, the 3DS. The battle system in 3D looked great. Um, zipping around the city, because I remember hearing yeah, rolling roller skates. Yeah. Um, but yeah, what I really enjoyed was the battling system on that game. Uh, the um, the animations, uh, and especially when like that you're evolving your uh, Pokemon. It's great. And like I said, it had the sort of like rinse wash repeat of different gym leaders but um it was still really fun exploring that world and i really enjoyed one of the art style too the the environments the environments just were just really fun to explore and and yeah when you're walking through blades of grass and you get the and then you you know and the battle music so catchy so that that brings us up day away no it doesn't because there is a game coming out in november a pokemon game and that pokemon game is sun and moon um you you probably would have heard about sun and moon it's it's going to be interesting because it seems to be playing on light and dark um quite heavily although the moon isn't a uh, dark type of pokemon the legendary Pokemon. I can't remember what the legendaries are called. I know the starting Pokemon are. There's an owl called Rowlet, which is really cute. I think he's a grass type. Uh, there's Litten, which is sort of like a fire cat. Fire kitten. Um, and um, Poplio, which is this bizarre seal. Um, I think when I pick it up, I don't know. I'm going to sort of dedicate that this uh, this release. I'm going to actually put some time and effort into Pokemon. Um, uh, yeah, I think probably I'll probably pick uh, Litten. Probably it just seems odd. I won't be able to take him seriously. But um, yeah, there the um, run through of all the majors of installments of Pokemon. Like I said, the World of 3D games like Pokemon Coliseum, I did really enjoy. Because I just remember having these big fights. Um, and you played as this main... Oh, what was the main... You played as this main protagonist who had two Pokemon. Like a white and a black version. They were quite feline Pokemon. And I cannot remember the names. Oh, damn it. That's a shame. 
But yeah, hopefully you enjoyed this pretty brief history of Pokemon. If you did, please leave a like and a comment down below. Next week, I'll get up a history of The Legend of Zelda, and that will probably be a bit longer, because I have a lot more to say on that. Well, mainly because I've played more of the games, and I'm a huge fan of the series. And then following that, we'll do less Nintendo ones. So Assassin's Creed, Grand Theft Auto, Call of Duty, a bit more universal games rather than sticking to the Nintendo niche. But yeah, if you like that, like you say, hit a like and a comment down below. We'd really appreciate to hear from you. Um, yeah, if you haven't seen already, check out the Super Mario with the history. Um, so yeah, whether you're working or trying to get some sleep over your stay positive keeping that positive mental attitude and being able to impart that onto others to make them be a bit more smiley but that's it from me for now um, more videos of course coming soon both on the channel and exclusively on the app i think i'm doing a, a whispered countdown from 100 just for the app because they're pretty popular so hopefully um people who check that out will like it all the relevant stuff is in the description box down below but that's it lots of love guys as always